Hello and welcome to another Plunder Basics from Blend and Pigment. I'm Guy Ruark and today we are going to be looking over washes. Now Joseph already did contrast paints on miniatures and did a whole video on those. Contrast paints are great. They're a good way to paint miniatures. Uh, they have pluses, they have minuses, just like all paints. Paints are pigment. So, but I don't have any contrast paints, and from what I've seen, I don't want to spend $8 a bottle because I like the cheap stuff. So, what I'm going to do today is show how you can use one of my favorite painting tricks, which is called washes. Uh, washes have been around a long time. All washes are is paint with water. Water down paint. That's really all washes. Now you can get fancy washes, like some of my favorite washes is the uh, uh, Citadel Agrex Earthshade. This is a brown wash, like a dark brown. It's uh, good for making things look dirty. And in Blood and Plunder, like some of the sailors only have one outfit, so they're going to be a little dirty. Another good company that makes washes uh, that are that not made yourself is Vallejo. Now, I've had this bottle itself of their Grizz Obscura. I've had this bottle for almost three years, and it is still still going. It's, I've, I've used it a lot. <laughs> you can tell from the, the bottle wear, you know. Um, and then I also have, recently, I obtained... Uh, some Army Painter Quick Shade. This stuff is a little bit of a different formulation than uh, these other washes. Uh, this one is, uh, especially this was their their dip. This is the infamous dip. When you hear a lot of old time war painters talk about, oh, did you dip that? It's it's uh, Army Painter had a system where you would do base coats on a model and then you'd put it in a dip, and the 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 wash, it worked like a wash, but also a sealer at the same time and kind of like a finisher. It was a great way to save time, but it kind of like with the the contrast paints, uh, people that, um, people derided it and because they didn't like it. So the problem is, is that this is in a eyedropper, which is to me a bad way to do a wash because have a wash stored at least because most of the time with the bottles that are available like this one the Vallejo one uh, you have a nice large opening it does have a, a flip top in case I wanted to spray it into something which I have never done um, but it has a large opening that I after shaking it to mix the contents and after using putty to hoist it down uh can just just dip the brush in directly and then usually uh use the edges to get most of the wash off the brush before applying it to a miniature the citadel paints are made to do that this one does have like it has it, i i never understood maybe somebody can help me i never understood what this little cone thing uh, is four on a Citadel paint. Uh, it always seems kind of dumb, but these ones are especially made for just dip your brush in, get rid of most of the paint, the, in this case a wash, and then paint your model. Um, with this, you would have to have some sort of secondary container to squirt it in, and then at that point, any wash you don't use, you've either lost or you can try doing the, um, the suction mechanisms of a dropper like this where you would squeeze it out put it in and then unsqueeze it like just let it go to have it suck back up there it works a little bit but not very much because it it works best when you have an airtight seal under it so you're always going to get a little bit of lost stuff that's why i have eyedroppers but it's so much of a hassle what i did do was Hey, look at this. This is an old Agrax Earthshade. You can kind of see, oh no, this is an Agrax Earthshade. This is a, one of my other favorite washes. Um, Reekland Flesh Shade. So this is an old Flesh Shade bottle. You can tell from the, the top. 
kind of a little bit. And I just squirted this whole bottle into here. And then I marked it with white paint to remind myself that it's different. Uh, it doesn't have, I took off the label obviously too, but I've been through about six Agra Third Shades because uh, on most of my ships, this was the wash I used on the whole ship. So, because it's brown. Um, so we're going to go over a couple different washes and um, a lot of, uh, also a lot of people are intimidated by models, especially Blood and Plunder ones, because they, they seem to have a lot of different parts. And so, like, like this, the I am painting up the dead. These are casualty markers. Uh, um, these are 17th century casualty markers. I, I released a kind of like fan-made casualty marker thing not too long ago. And it was embarrassing because I didn't have any done for myself yet. So I, I pushed these to the top of my list and I'm doing them now. So as you see though, this, ca this casualty marker is not, this is not what I would call the best paint job right now. Uh, the shoes are my primer still. I didn't even paint them yet before washing. And the orange, you see it's kind of splotchy. That is even after three coats because orange and yellow are bad. Um, the hand, it wasn't too careful on that. He has all of these little, um, cartridges that are not painted yet. None of his accessories are painted, but this is, this is where I apply a wash is I get that shading in there and then that lets me apply my colors on top of it. So this, this gentleman right here too, the, uh, sailor, the dead sailor, uh, as you see, I have white, um, and his flesh tone, but as you're looking at it, the skin tone, that's only one coat of the, um, my Citadel flesh tone I use, the Kieslev flesh. Uh, that's only one coat of Kieslev flesh, so the, the primer is peeking out on it. Over here too, I made his coat brown, but I didn't, I, I ran over the line sometimes. His, his shoes aren't painted, his bag isn't painted, pistol's not painted. So these are really, really rough paint jobs where I'm just blocking in my colors. Um, and this is, to me, the perfect place to apply the wash because a wash is going to let you add some detail to the, the area. And then I can apply more paint as highlights over the area. The same thing on the last gentleman. I gave him a blue shirt, gray pants, because he, he looked kind of kind of Dutch, I think. He's wearing a um, he's wearing the the hat that I've really seen on Lanceros. This is kind of interesting. Shoes aren't painted again, and I'm going to apply a wash over the whole thing. So I showed you the different washes that I have. The Army Painter Vallejo Citadel. And uh, I'm going to add a third one or fourth one, which is going to be self made wash using just a black and water. I have uh, some fresh water in here. When you're going to be doing this, it's kind of tricky. Uh, you want to be using fresh water because any pigment that's in the water is going to be in the wash because you're using the wash. So we're going to try that first. It will be a little bit fun. Um, Anytime we're doing something outside the lines, painting outside the lines is fun. Now, even though I represented these, these are not the colors we're going to use per se. Because when using a wash, there's a couple different avenues you can go down. One is kind of like the lazier, I just want to get all of these done uh, plan, which is you choose a color. And this is, these are the colors that I would choose. No, not, not the Reclaimed Flesh Shade. Reclaimed Flesh Shade is, I'll, I'll go over it in a second. These are the colors I would use, and I have done it a lot. You put this wash over the whole model. And then, so you have a, a uniform shadow um, color to work with the, with the whole model. And then... And that lets you, it's, it's uh, convenient because you apply a wash to the whole thing and then you can 
uh, cover up the wash as needed using your, you don't have to be too careful about it. Using, uh, using the different colors, you can cover up what's needed. You can accentuate. I don't like doing that as much because Agrax Earthshade and black really does not work with, with flesh tones. Any super dark wash will not work with flesh tones. If you look at, looking at my hands, you know, right now underneath the light, uh, other than other than the ring, there's no, there's no. Even if I close my hand, these colors between the the fingers. Well, I guess on my thumb, but you're not gonna ever represent. This person was painting a model miniature recently, so they have black paint on their thumb. Even closing my fingers, this is not a true black inside of there, and and that's what we're looking at when we look at a model. Like let's look at the half naked gentleman. Um, if you apply this black to all of this flesh, this black will look great on the white because this this raw uh, this is terrible. But the contrast it's terrible because it's all the things you know. But the contrast with the white and the gray it goes from white to gray and then and then really dark shadows that's not a true black right there anyway to, as well but you know as much as a a true black is my hand but with adding a gray this uh black wash to it and especially his pants those ripples and underneath parts it will really add a lot of high contrast that will make the pants look look more realistic um Adding it to flesh doesn't because, um, as humans, as humans, we are kind of, uh, preternaturally gifted towards identifying people because we're social animals. So, you know, pants not looking true to, too true to life, that's fine. Flesh or something that we can see should be human not looking true to form, it's going to stand out. Uh, and that's why you, you run into that problem a lot with faces. If you don't want to do eyes, don't do eyes, you know, most of the time. Um, because of the same reason, where having it look similar is better than having it look wrong. So, <clears throat> enough talk, more paint. Uh, let's start with kind of the, uh, we're going to start with it, it being done kind of the old-fashioned way. And uh, I need, I'm a little parched. Today I am drinking uh, something that I thought was really special. I found $3, one, $3 red mixed wine. It, uh, I spent a lot of time in California, and before I could drink, I was in California. Um, and... There was this this legendary wine that was advertised all the time from Trader's, Trader Joe's called Two Buck Chuck. That was a uh, two dollar bottle of wine, and I'm sure they still have it. I think they increased the price to three dollars. So when I went into uh, Winco here and saw that they had a, a three dollar bottle of blended red wine, I had to try it. And I, actually, it's a lot. You know, I don't usually drink um, a lot of wine other than kind of like a sangria. Uh, I really love a, a good sangria, but that's just because I love citru citrus as well. Um, but this this is exactly it's it's a deal for three dollars compared to a light winded beer. All right, so. When you're using a wash, uh, use cheap brushes. This is kind of like my washing brush. It is, I have painted a lot of models with it before it became a washing brush. And now it kind of has that, that distinction because uh, washing, washes will ruin brushes. Um, yeah, they just do. So we're going to shake it up. And then with these bottles, I shake it to get the paint down here because I use only the stuff that sticks to the cap. Um, it's because it makes it last a long time. 
and it, it treats it a lot like a Citadel paint where you go directly into it. Uh, I'm not using my wet palette right now uh, just because of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply just a little bit of paint to the brush. So just looking at how much paint is on the brush. And this is this is totally not how you should use washes. <laughs> I'm just doing it to, to prove a point. And then we're going to put the brush in the water. So now it's soaked up water and we're not even gonna tap it out. So now a little bit more water. I'll swish it around a little bit. So now we're going to apply it and oh, look at that. It is activating like a wash. So as you see, it's, uh, it's, this, is, this is what washes do, is they take all the little nooks and crannies and details in your model and they, uh, they go into them. So we're gonna, we're gonna hit up his flesh so you can kind of see what I was talking about with the darker colors. I'm gonna hit his hat. Now, as you notice with this, I am going just one, one thing. You don't have to continually dip with most washes. Um, there is, not, not when you're doing this method anyways. So, and that's it. We're gonna let this guy dry now. And then uh, going around. So what I wanna look for is when I'm doing a wash is I want to look for it pulling in places I don't want it to pull. So see this, he's pulling right here on his shoe. Should not be there. So I'm going to just run over it again. Because there's no, there's a little imperfection in the model. But if he was wearing a shoe, that would be, if this was a real shoe, that would just be flat. So I'm going to take it out of there. Uh, I want to apply it more to these shadows over here. It's kind of hard to add washes or add paint because once it's mostly done with the paints on it um, anything you touch it's going to pick up unless you are at a, a edge on the model like a raised portion and then you can run it over it and it will drain any paint on it into that ledge so as you saw that that is how we apply a wash to one model using regular paint. Uh, you have to be careful with this, but this, this lets you use, you have to be careful with this because if you apply, if you have too much paint on your brush, which you saw the tiniest bit, it was just a smidge of paint. If you have too much paint on your brush and you applied the water, you're just painting the model. You're not doing a wash. You just have paint there that's going to go on everything and it's gonna, the model's going to become whatever color you put on your brush. If you have too little paint, it's fine because you can just apply more of it later on. So always go, always go less, less is more. <laughs> but it allows, but doing this, doing this and understanding that about washes lets you make any color into a wash. So usually, traditionally, washes are only darker colors because shadows are darker but this using this method hey look at this bright blue color if you for some reason wanted to put a bright blue color in the crevices of a model this is how you would do it colors that don't have washes like yellows yellows are terrible anyways but it will let you put it in there um Bright, bright colors, uh, 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 metals, anything you want using this method can become a wash. Uh, you have to remember why you want the wash. It's going to make it so, again, <clears throat> it's going to, if this was a model, the wash would go into there. There's usually not a lot of reason it would be bright blue inside of there. It's gonna make the wash, it's gonna make the model look bad usually unless there's something cool that you're trying to do like i've seen people use this method with where they paint the model black and then they have a white that they use as a wash all of a sudden it's like a it's like a, a negative uh picture so it's, it's kind of a cool trick 
So uh, now let's move on to him. Now you saw this was this was my all over wash, and you're gonna see when this dries, you're kind of gonna gonna see his face. Uh, when you do <clears throat> in orders of of drying time, this is gonna take the longest because you have to wait for the water to evaporate. The next one that's gonna take the longest is Citadel paints. For some reason, their washes take a long time to dry out. And sometimes they will never dry. Like, I've had that happen. It's it's very strange. Uh, and then the next I noticed is the the Vallejo wash. These are dry really quickly, and as does the Army Painter. <clears throat> I don't know if it's their solution in there, but as long as you don't have it really deep in an area, these will dry really quickly. Like, almost even doing four models, by the time I get to the fourth one, the first one will be dry. It's, it's really that fast sometimes. So we've done one, we're gonna do this person and we're going to do two different shades. Oh, I wanna do that white. Oh, well, um, we're gonna do the, oh wait, I got, I have that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever even opened this. Oh, no, I did, I did open it. So, um, we've talked about what we've talked about washes. Washes are paint and water. They're watered down paint, which means they are watered down paint, which means they are mostly water because paint is already pretty liquidy. It's it's very wet. So when you are doing a wash, uh, you do not repeat the the sins of the past. Take some of your, this is poster putty. Poster putty is very cheap. It's $2 for a bunch of it. And you, you know, you can replace it, but the more it gets used, the honestly, the better it is. It's what I use to put the models on here, but have poster putty, have a wad of it, put it on your table. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the Nuln Oil. So you saw right there, look, I knocked it over like that while picking it up. Uh, and I, it's not because I'm drunk, but it's just that these are tiny things. So with your poster putty down, you're gonna shake it up, shake it vigorously, holding onto the lid. Aww. And then you, I, I was saying all because my uh, my rabbit laid down. Um, you want to attach it to there. Now that's because, and I'm sighing because I have lost I have lost more washes to them being knocked over over the course of painting miniatures than I ever have to painting. Uh, maybe not, you know, I've gone, I've done, I've been doing the, this method a while, but I recently had a, I, I'm going to start doing it with the Citadel paints too, because I had a, um, the brass bottle tip over and I lost pretty much 70% of the bottle, uh, 70% of, of, not that one, there we are. 70% of this that it had for a bunch of years, it just up oh, fell over and all oh, is there. And that's a risky run. So using a little bit of putty, adhering it to the table will make it so you can't accidentally knock it over. You can spill it. Um, it's not foolproof, but oh. <clears throat> so uh, this is a wash first um, onto, onto the matter at hand. The first wash we're going to use is Nuln Oil. This is a black that we're going to apply to the fabric. Nuln Oil, I think that's how it's pronounced. A lot like the black that wash that we made. Well, not, not a lot like that. The Grizz Obscuro uh, is a black wash. Known oil has a little bit of a brown in it, like like oil. Um, so when you need to understand when 
you're applying it that there's going to be a little bit of a brown that it, it does. I, I don't know if Citadel has a black wash. I never really, after buying that Grizz Obscura, I'm, and I know that's dark gray, but I like, I like that it's top word, it's Grizz Obscura. Um, I haven't checked for a black uh, wash for from Citadel, just because I usually didn't need it. They might have one, but Known Oil is a good, is close. That brown um, really helps you kind of uh, helps most things that would be have a little brown in them. So I'm going to add this to his hair as well, partially because of the bandana, but also because um, hair, hair usually is better layered because uh, it's a bunch of strands. So you're going to have darker shadows in the hair. And as you see, I'm just, I like getting that, uh, that wash at the bottom. So that is, that is nice. It's really gently. That's it. We're done. We're done with black. Now we're going to set this aside. Didn't even knock over the bottle. <clears throat> now we're going to use the Reeklin Flesh Shade. This is the... This is kind of what I use for all flesh things. It is a, like a, a dark orange. Just so, kind of in, from going in it, um, <clears throat> brown is dark orange. I, I don't think I really have to say that, but like, There's some confusion out there sometimes about what color brown is, and brown is is usually a it's it's always a dark dark orange, a very dark orange. So this is your like dark orange. It's uh it's for applying. It's it's a brown. As you see, it's not as dark as the Agrax Earth Shade. It has a lot, a lot more orange in it, as you're seeing from that wash. And it's good because just like I was saying with my hand, it applies that kind of uh, that living element to it. So, especially with, with muscle definition, this guy has a great muscular back. So... It's going to make those areas look kind of like roundish, rounded more, where that detail is going to, going to pop around the wrist. And that's, that's just what we're doing. And that's, he's done. I'm going to set him aside <clears throat> while I have it open. And as you saw when I was doing it, I don't know if I commented, <clears throat> I got some on the brush and I am using the bottle to strip away most of it. So the cool thing about <clears throat> cool thing about the cool thing about the flesh shade is you you can kind of go over the lines because you're going to be using a different wash later on. So we're going around and just adding some of it, and we're going to be adding or not we <laughs> me I'm I'm going to be adding some uh, detail later on. So. I don't really have to worry about this going anywhere I don't want it to. And there we go. Nice. So that's all of the flesh I needed painted, except for the first guy. He was special. So now this guy is painted completely using Citadel, and now we're going to add some let's use some Grizz Obscura on this one with the orange. Now you should usually add a um 
usually I do have an orange wash, more of an orange, uh, with the Fugan orange, but I'm gonna try this black one just to, to give you an example. Um, these are casualty markers. They have a fan-made supplement. Their way, the way they're used in the game currently is when you're playing with sentries. They can represent DC sentries. I kind of forgot about that use of them when I was playing. Or well not playing when I was. Uh, oh, and a good way to tell when you're done shaking is. Most bottles will have residue of the item at the bottom, and so if you look at the bottom of them, you can tell when you are done mixing it because there, the residue will be there. It'll be gone. What's a good one to experiment, to show that on? Yeah, this is my red red wash. See how it has this color up top, but it has this kind of chalky stuff down here. Um, that's that's your pigment. That down there, that needs to be mixed up if I was going to use that. Looking at my agri the the Citadel paints are good. They're they're mainly a lot of them. There is some separation that happens in them, but a lot of them are you can't noticeably see it, at least in what I've seen. So I got this. It's attached. I'm going to unscrew, <clears throat> and again, uh, I I have knocked this over before, even with looking at it it's it's down halfway even with me knocking over i think i used a eyedropper to save as much of the wash i can when i did knock it over the one time so let's see i am going to use quick shade on him and i'm going to use the this grizz obscura on my orange fella so i'm getting rid of most of it Vallejo, Vallejo washes are excessively bubbly half the time, so you have to be just kind of like aware of that. Um, so then we're going to use the wash. Oh, that's beautiful. So we're just applying it. The whole thing. So see, it, it takes my splotchy paint job frankly a very splotchy paint job and it's just smoothing out those colors that i had on there beautifully smoothing it out yeah a little bit more getting rid of most of the wash on the brush it's really the name the thing to remember in washes is controlling it now you see how he has a black hat and pants i gave him even though you would think that this is black and that those items are black. Apply a wash to those areas as well because those here you did you usually will do one or two coats of paint on those and by adding a wash to it you make it so that any areas that those do have any recesses that they have will become darker even though that looks great. That's like, that maybe basically gave him a brown coat. Um, hey, like I was saying, orange. Orange is dark. I mean, brown is dark orange. So he has it by adding a dark color to an orange, it became brown. Um, but, <clears throat> so adding adding a wash to a black area will make it so it will it will get a little darker especially with the his hat and pants i'm going to uh apply a highlight so that will even help that as you know further there we go really simply he's done one left all right so this will be this was black paint this was citadel this was vallejo and now we're going to be doing army painter so this isn't really a review of them this is just using their their stuff 
I do have, I kept this bottle because even after shaking it vigorously, look at that residue in the bottom. I want, I want that pigment on my model. And this is the light one. So look at how, how dark these turn out. I didn't use Agrox or Shade anywhere. Um, to my detriment. So, but we had three versions of black and then you're gonna see that this is essentially, even for a light shade, this is really very close to a, a brown or a black. So we're gonna do an all over wash. Kind of look at his beanie. You see, um, Army Painter has a little bit different of a temperament. Because again, this is <clears throat> this is the infamous dip that they had. So if there's anything that's close to to contrast paints, it's honestly what this is intended to do. Where this is meant to pull in those recesses evenly. It's more of a uh, oil or varnish that you're applying than a true wash, I would think. And you kind of see that in the treatment on him, where it is, it has multiple different shades going from the high point of the model to the midpoint to the recesses. And that's, he is, he is partially done. We're going to go over him now and I want to, I didn't really do this on the other ones because I was talking about other stuff. Any areas you don't want wash, well, we talked about it with the first one. Any areas you don't want wash, take away the wash. You empty the brush into your pot <clears throat> by using the lip and then just touch the brush to the areas you don't want, your, high, your places you intend to highlight usually. And that's, we're done. So let's review. I wonder if these two are dry yet over here. Okay, let's review. So this one we're looking at right now. Uh, it looks like he is fully dry except for the water from my water thing. Ah, oh, I got it on him. And you're seeing you got a little bit of detail in there with that black. Um, I'm not super happy with that, but I will, you know, I will, I will live with that. Then this is the Citadel paints. See his back is still wet, <clears throat> but you had his uh, pants dried and you have what, you know, those are, those are almost none. Like I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight to them, but those pants, those pants are mostly done. His flesh, he, he still has that area on his back that needs to dry. Look at the one that we did just a moment ago. He is almost dry. There's some places where it's still, but look how dark that is. Uh, I'm really gonna have to bring those colors up to make him mop. But I like how it took my splotchy paint job and you notice it smoothed it. So it now looks, it looks uniform now. And then this one that is still wet, you can kind of see how it's acting like the varnish um, is drying. It's not dry yet. It's still wet. We can still play around with it, but you see how it's going to form. So that is all four of those, those different washes. And this has been Guy Rourke at, from, or from, ha <laughs> ha, uh, from Blood and Pigment with another Plunder Basics. Check out the website for articles I wrote. It's been a while. I think the last article I wrote was December 20th on French Buccaneers. Uh, but <clears throat> cheers. Check out our articles. Uh, check out the other videos we've been doing. And let me know what you think.